Okay, so today I've decided to start by um, going now into the genealogical, you know, descendants of Charles Morton. Again, we don't have, I don't have any proof that um, uh, who Dr. Dr. Charles Morton's father was. It's said to have been a John. I have some loosely supporting evidence that I really can't prove back. But nonetheless, I'm going to go into his descendants. <clears throat> And I'll start with his daughter. Those those I can absolutely verify are his, his descendants by his wife, Mary Berkeley. Here's the marriage date that I got from the International Genealogical Index, September 13th, 1744. Oh, I got September 12th, 1744. i got to change my <laughs> record here. <coughs> okay. Now... The one known birth, the, the one birth that I do know about is uh, a, her, his, his daughter, Elizabeth Morton, that I also got for the International Genealogical Index, but it's um, very much corroborated by um, <laughs> later accounts. Even his will verifies that he has a daughter named Elizabeth. And his will doesn't I'm not quite sure if his will mentions Mary Berkeley in it. Um, he doesn't seem to mention any Berkeley heirs. Uh, that, in fact, he doesn't name any alternative heirs to um, his granddaughters besides mentioning Charles Carr. And I, I would think that <coughs> he would um, name another member of the Berkeley family. He does. In Dr. Charles Martin's will, he does seem to keep separate um, his Twickingham holdings and his Westmoreland land in one bucket and his Irish estates in a second bucket, and his Irish estates are more geared towards his son, Charles Carr, as he calls him in his will. <coughs> and his daughter's, his daughter's actual descendants, because uh, he outlived his daughter, uh, his, his granddaughters by um, James Danzey. Um, he actually even outlived one of his grandsons, too. Dr. Charles Morton did. But um, he, he only mentions the two living granddaughters and, and pretty much associates them with the Westmoreland land and the, um, <coughs> and the, um, his, whatever he owned at Twickingham. Now, going back just to kind of just to ponder on that a little bit. Um, now, again, just to review, you know, we kind of don't, I, I really don't know where the money came from to, to buy these things, whether they're leases or actual ownership. Where did the money come from for Dr. Charles Morton to, Morton to obtain <coughs> the estates in Ireland? I do note that in the Irish National Library there is a... Um, indenture. I don't know if I have that in the footnotes. I may be getting bogged down too many details here, but and I'm, <coughs> I'm at a point where I actually have redundant notes here. And also I oh, is Mary Jane Buckworth uh, that I mentioned earlier. I couldn't remember the name of that she she that Dr. Charles Morton was a part of either one of the beneficiaries or administrators of her estate. Okay, <clears throat> but I digress. Now I'm trying to find I've got 22 different <laughs> references here. I'm just scrolling up, but I guess I'll show it. For right now, I'm looking for. Now, where I have here, I've got a will of Elizabeth Morton, and I'm just saying, <clears throat> that, you know, there she is. She is, um, it was proved in uh, April 8th, 1802, and I know I'm digressing off my subject, but nonetheless, um, I don't know whether um, <clears throat> this Elizabeth has anything to do with him. That was one thing I was kind of hesitant about showing the notes right now because that's experimental 
this um, lease from Gertrude Morton, also of Belcher Pet Cabin County. I mean, <clears throat> what's interesting is, you know, Charles Morton was eventually in Cabin County. Now, is it just coincidence with other Mortons there that had nothing to do with him a relationship as far as he knew, or does the fact they were there have something to do with that? I just don't know. <clears throat> and um, again, back in John Tatlow's yeah, John Tatlow's memoirs, he mentions that Dr. Morton needed to go up there around 1780. Right? So, okay. Um... I'm seeing that these, I'm just going to go on, <clears throat> I'm just going to go into this a little bit. I guess I'm not going to get to his descendants just yet. <clears throat> the lease from Gertrude Morton to John Armstrong is dated. Elizabeth Morton showing died 1802, that's after he died. <clears throat> and Elizabeth Morton make any sense because see Elizabeth Pratt went on to marry a guy named I believe John Bacon and she would have been Elizabeth Bacon so I don't think that 1802 death date there would have if anything it might be his sister if she was a single individual or no because he outlived his daughter too and his daughter would have been named Danzy uh, there is a 1783 Lease from Gertrude Morton to Thomas McGrath, and I don't recognize even a match of the name between John Tatlow's account and that. Um, now, <clears throat> here's the quick came leave from Charles, Mor Charles Morton and his wife to David Buttle of Dublin for lands at Kilmurray, Meath County. Uh, and that was in 1768. Now, that is, yes, a year after he married Lady Savile. So that would have been Lady Savile. And this is what it is. This is one of the items in the manuscript collections of the, at the Irish National Library that I have, I've, I've not had a chance to, to read. And so, <clears throat> just, just to get back on this thing, we're, you know, we're kind of going into the contents of his will and analyzing it a little bit. <clears throat> the descendants... Now, see, Elizabeth Pratt was a close relation... It doesn't say exactly how, and I haven't completely sorted it out. I think I might have an idea of Mary Pratt, who was Lady Savile, uh, also the wife of, uh, I think it was Thomas Wallace. And so I mean, Charles Martin was her, was her third marriage. And, um, you know, the Pratts did have a presence. Even uh, Mary Pratt, Lady Savile, was probably even born in Cabra Castle, as far as I know, or at least grew up in Cabra Castle <clears throat> with the Pratt family. So that that's there, but the thing is, usually, you know, if a man wants to marry a wife, especially, you know, usually a family that has supposedly as much wealth as the Pratt's, um, although I'm not sure if on second marriages this is so true, but at least where they're going to bear children, um, Charles usually they'd have to give some kind of dowry. You know, as far as I you know, and now I'm looking, we're really looking at the evidence. We're trying to figure out how did Charles Morton get this this land? Maybe it's the other way around. Who gave what to Charles Morton to let him get this thing? Assuming nothing else, he, now he could have just had wealth in the family, but I'm not seeing how that wealth passed down because I, I don't have any a will of a father to explain how he got these things. I don't have land records to explain how he got these things. So, you know, and could it have been that Elizabeth Berkeley passed on some wealth to him and it just wasn't very clear. No will is necessary because, um, you know, property accrues to the husband at the time. And so... You know, so some of this property and some of this wealth could have been accrued by Murray Berkeley. You know, it almost seems like the Twickingham property and the um, the land in Westmoreland County was what accrued to him. And I, I, I guess, you know, since I have this handy, 
guess I'll just go up here to, uh, I have my little drive here, and I have some photographs. One of those photographs is of his farmland, so I'm going to display that now. This is a photograph Jill Gray took and sent to me, and this here, those walls look very ancient, but who knows, 300 years old. <laughs> who knows, Dr. Morton had those walls up at the time, but that that's it, that's, that's the farm. I believe is in West Morgan County, if I got that right. <clears throat> Twickingham, I'm not sure. Okay, so, and then he gets at least pretty sizable amount of land up in, in Ireland, and so we're kind of wondering, you know, where did that, that money come from, and what happened in 1780 to cause him to go up there, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and, um, so, and the fact that his will kind of separates